Hey, good morning and welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 17. David has just heard the words of Goliath, the defiant words of Goliath. And let's see what happens next. Our readings at verses 26 to 31. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David, and he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. Now we're going to leave it there and come back tomorrow morning, but uh, let's see what's going on here. Here is the three older brothers, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shema, And here comes David. He's actually brought them some food that they need. And what's their reaction? Oh, what are you doing here, you little runt? Uh, are, you, are you disobeying? Are you, are you disregarding the sheep? What are you doing here? Who are you? You're nobody. Get out of here. You know, that kind of spirit is going on here. But David is asking around. David is making some noise. And he says, well, what's going to happen if somebody actually defeats Goliath? And he hears all the... The statements, oh yeah, you'll be in good favor with the king. He Maybe he'll give you the, you know, he's going to give you his daughter to marry and all this. There's these different incentives apparently have been bandied about. And so finally Saul hears about it and he sends for him. I think the reaction of David's brothers is kind of interesting here. These guys were kind of overlooked. They were passed over to be king of Israel. They know it because they were there when Samuel anointed David to be king not, not too many, not too long ago. But they haven't told anybody about that. Our little brother to be the king, they probably laughed at that. But now here he is. He's on sight. He's heard the words of that defiant Goliath. And David's making noises like, hey, he wants to take him on. Nobody else is really doing it. Everybody else is standing around. And they're making sure that David is heard. Yeah, there's some incentives. You might want to, you might want to think about this. You might want to go out and fight Goliath. They would, if David wins, it's all good for them. And if David loses, they haven't lost anything, really. See? See how, how it's probably going through their mind? But it's not just them. It's not just David's brothers. It's not just the guys in the army. And it's not just David. It's not just Saul. You know, it's not even just Goliath. It is the fact that God is working providentially for his people. It ha it's, it's happening day by day. God has brought now someone who's able to defeat Goliath, and now he's come to the attention of Saul. So we're going to see what happens next tomorrow morning. Right now it's interesting, this defiant this defiant, mocking Goliath is standing there, and, and it's a 40 days of testing, and now God's champion is there on the scene. So... Interesting stuff as we look forward to what will happen next. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, as we seek to serve you, uh, we will run into interpersonal conflict like David had with his brother Eliab. Accusations will be made that it's because of pride or it's because of insolence or there's some other reason going on. And yet, in this case, we know that it's not from pride, it's not from insolence. It's because God is working providentially to deliver his people. And he's chosen David as his vessel to do that, as we'll see in the next few days. Eliab doesn't really get it. Lord, how many times are you working for our deliverance, but either we or the leaders that we've, we have in the church don't get it? We just don't understand what you're about to do, and so we miss out on something perhaps that you're ready to do. Help us, Lord. Help us to be available to you. Help us to be willing to think fresh thoughts, outside-the-box thoughts, like, like here's this young David not a big burly warrior, but here's David. Could he defeat Goliath? Nobody really thinks he can. David thinks he can because he knows that you're on his side. So Lord, help us to remember that you're on our side and anything large will be small before your might and your power. Bless us, Lord, and watch over us. Use us in your service, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So may the Lord bless and watch over us and use us in his service, but we've got to be bold enough, bold enough to stand up for the armies of Israel. Are you bold enough?